Ash Wednesday begins Lent, 40 days of fasting before Easter. Does Lent serve any purpose for a Protestant? Let's look at several reasons for a Christian to fast and pray. We'll look at the topic of fasting in Joel 2, Psalm 51, 2 Corinthians 5 and 6, and Matthew 6. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Turn to me is the positive side of repentance. A genuine change of heart is pictured here in fasting and true grief. Surrender your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Outward expressions such as ashes at Lent and the ancient custom of tearing the clothing are okay. But the most important thing is a positive change of heart. God's great desire is to be kind to us. But like any loving parent, he'll not do so in a manner that encourages continued harm to ourselves and others. Who knows if he'll turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Of the five major classifications of offering in Deuteronomy 1 through 5, these were a communal meal shared by God and man, also pictured in Christian communion. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly. Another purpose of trumpets was to announce a holy day. Atonement was such a fast day. But this seems to be a special fast day, including a sacred assembly. The word church comes from a Greek community assembly, a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into a public place. For Christians, it means that we're called out from the world to a heavenly assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. This is an urgent assembly. Even weddings must be put on hold. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet went to him after he'd gone into Bathsheba. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. David mentions three aspects of sin, transgression, iniquity, and sin itself, or rebellion, guilt, and wrong. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. To acknowledge our wrongs takes a big man. Notice how many in business and politics are just small men, claiming as some have that they have nothing to repent of. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Even a Christian can go astray and needs to seek reconciliation with God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. How do we become this righteousness? Not on our own, but in Him. We then, as workers together with Him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Can we receive the grace of God in vain? Does this go against the idea of once saved, always saved? Why begin in the Spirit and end in the flesh? When you fast, don't look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your Father, who's unseen. And your Father, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. One reason that fasting is such a secret in the Christian community is that we're encouraged to keep it private when we fast. 
Fasting and prayer have been the habit of the faithful since the beginning. The purpose of this has always been to turn further from the ways of this world and with a sincere heart, turn to God.